I was pretty sure that the soup was okay to eat. No one would die from it anyway. But I didn't know if they would like it. The captain of the boat had invited us to eat, and the cook was waiting for our response. The evening air was cold, even though we were chugging down the mighty Amazon River in the middle of the Brazilian rainforest. Hot soup sounded good, and as usual, I was hungry. Yet I could tell that the work team, just in from the States, was a little nervous. The kitchen was a bathroom-sized room next to the engine, and to the team, probably didn't even look as clean as a bathroom in McDonald's. There was some murmuring about uh, not being hungry. I'm going to try some of that soup, I said. The three Brazilians traveling with us seemed relieved. It would be rude to eat if everyone else said no. They were hungry, too. The team slowly straggled in, and everyone sat around the table. Three missionaries, three Brazilians, and five gringos from America. There it was, a big bowl of soup. Looked pretty normal. There was bread, butter, and maracujá juice, a native Amazon fruit. Boy, did it taste good. Someone said, this soup is great. I was hungry. The soup disappeared. We asked for more soup and bread, and then they couldn't get rid of us. We laughed. We tried to talk over the noise of the engine. Everyone tried that maracujá juice. The Brazilians kidded little Stevie about his <clears throat> substantial appetite. It broke the ice. For the first time, the North American team stepped into Brazilian culture. For the first time, they risked enough to say by their actions, this is uncomfortable and I'm nervous, but we love you in Christ and want to embrace your culture. The message was heard loud and clear by the Brazilians. After soup, we all stayed up singing songs in English and Portuguese. Some talked. I let my eyes wander out over the dark waters. It would be a good trip. I thought about the other times the Lord had invited us to do something different, something difficult, to embrace another person, to open up to the people of Brazil. Soccer is king in Brazil, but I was not one of its fans. Perhaps if I could play well myself, I would like soccer more. It was during our district leadership retreat that my game was tested. I really didn't want to go out there and look like a fool, who would, but the Brazilian pastors were calling to me. Out of shape, inexperienced, overpowered, I walked onto the field. I was ready for the worst. It was a blast! I even made a goal. And afterwards, as we all sat around puffing and sore, we talked and shared together. So often it is the simple and common things that build bridges and create trust between people. I didn't minister to the Brazilians on the playing field, but the playing field allowed me to minister later on down the road. I felt it made a difference when there were problems in a church and I would give counsel. It made a difference as we began meeting with the pastors in a discipleship group. The playing field allowed me to build a relationship and then to minister to build up in the name of Christ. And like the soup, in the end, the experience was one I'll never forget. Do you like fish? Grilled fish, fried fish, fish head soup, fish casserole, cold fish for breakfast, or fish bits just for a snack? I'm really not too fond of fish. But to Brazilians, fish on the grill is like a barbecue on the 4th of July. Soon after we arrived, Antonio and Doris invited us for a friendly gathering. It was going to be a giant fish feast. I sensed they had doubts that we would come, but I could also see that they were reaching out to us. Nervously, I replied, sure, we wouldn't miss it. We were still pretty green, unfamiliar with many customs and unable to communicate well in Portuguese. I was thinking of our daughter Anna. She was only one, and eating bony fish didn't sound like a good idea. A mother worries about how sanitary things would be and what could go wrong in a situation like that. We arrived ready for anything. I must say, chopping off the fish head and picking out tiny fish bones with my fingers will never be a favorite thing for me, and yet it tasted good. 
Anna didn't eat much, but played a lot with the other kids. This was the first of many get-togethers with Antonio and Doris. They came to be our closest friends. They have since mentioned that first fish picnic and how much it meant to them. We couldn't begin to tell you the many ways in which God has used Antonio and Doris to bless us as a couple and help in our ministry here in Brazil. Antonio and Doris both work at the Bible College where Tom is director. Antonio is one of our best students and brightest prospects for the future. I'm so glad that we didn't do the easy, comfortable thing, but follow God's leading. P.S. Doris is a fantastic cook. Soup? Anyone? Steve became quite well known in the short time he was in Brazil. He is a rather large man and makes an immediate impression when you meet him. The Brazilians called him Estevãozinho, which means little Stevie. Our boat pulled over at Itapea Sioux and our team got off. It was four o'clock in the morning. Linville Gross, our work team leader, cracked the whip and by 5.30 we were at work, painting and putting up lighting in the Wesleyan church we'd come to work on. We had a deadline. By two in the afternoon we stopped our work on the church and left for Ahoizal, a small preaching point three hours out from Itapea Sioux. We glided more and more into the interior and leaving the Amazon River, navigated our way into the smaller tributaries. Finally, our boat could go no further, and we stopped near a house, the doorway to Ahoizal. But we had a problem. One could only get to Ahoizal using canoes, and there were too many people. That meant a wait of about two hours for some of us. Steve was nervous. He was a big man, and the dugout canoes were not exceptionally big. Steve had already told us that he couldn't swim, nor did he want to risk the ever-present danger of water snakes and crocodiles. He was placing his life in the hands of two Brazilian men whom he had never met. The canoes returned. Steve was helped into the canoe. The paddlers knew what they were doing. We made the trip with no problems, weaving our way through the flooded fields. Night was falling as we touched land near the little house that would be our church and later sleeping quarters. People began to arrive. We were amazed that they could make their way into the pitch black night cruising the waterways. Steve gave his powerful testimony, his very flesh bearing the witness of the marks of sin in his life. Praise be to God that he is able and willing to transform our lives through Jesus Christ. Four people came forward to accept Christ or renew their commitment to him. Four lives that will be changed for eternity because of one man's faithfulness. Two days later, during our team devotions, Steve told us of a canoeing accident in which he almost drowned. He thanked God that his faith allowed him to get in a canoe for the first time in 14 years so that the good news of Jesus Christ might reach into the middle of the Amazon rainforest. God will ask you to do something different, something difficult, to reach out for Him. God is wanting to use you today where you work and live. Consider the possibility of joining a work team, of sacrificing through faith promise giving, or spending hard time on your knees in prayer for missions. The opportunities are before you. Soup, anyone? <laughs>